Hello, we're at MoneyConf, the fintech section of Web Summit 2017 in Lisbon, and I am pleased to be joined by Frederick Udea, the Chief Executive Officer of Societe Generale, who has joined us to talk about open banking and the advent of PSD2, a European Union law that's going to change the retail banking landscape in Europe. Mr. Udea, thank you for joining us. Uh, open banking is going to be reinforced by this new law in January of 2018. Uh, it's probably going to see increased competition from not just fintechs, but the likes of Apple and Alipay and Facebook and Amazon. How is a retail bank like Societe Generale going to face this competitive threat? Fundamentally by being, I think, as offensive as possible. What do I mean by this? Taking the challenge as serious, which means understanding that there's a need to change the model and culturally embrace the new technologies. Secondly, capitalize on what is at the heart of the banking relationship. We talk a lot about here payments and data. What is important is to remain a trusted partner in terms of pr protection of the data and, of course, around the savings and wealth management. Now, PSD2 is going to be creating a lot of challenges for banks, but also opportunities. Banks have controlled these customer relationships for a long time. They're entrenched in markets, and they could open some new markets. One of those markets may be Germany, which is very fragmented. Do you see PSD2 as providing an opportunity for Societe Generale to go into a market like Germany and expand your presence there? For us, at this stage, the priority is really to ensure we adapt our networks in France and, of course, take advantage of the leading online bank in France, which is Boursorama. You still have, at this stage in Europe, pretty different fragmented retail markets, and the convergence will take a lot of time. So our priority is France for the time being. In the longer term, we will see what we can do, thanks to a capacity to effectively have very streamlined processes on online banking. Open banking is very much centered on payments right now, controlling payments. You see that as a, as a battle that's shaping up over the next two or three years? Yes, certainly payment is already a pretty fragmented uh, arena, and I think uh, we'll see further competition and probably fragmentation, which will not be that easy for the clients. And payment is at the heart of certain business models, so it's normal. But beyond payment, I would like to highlight that banks are doing much more than just payment. We provide the security on the savings, on the deposits, on wealth management, very important going forward. And of course, we finance the economy, not just with retail clients, but also with SMEs and corporate clients. And here, the story, I think, is still different. But fintech startups, as well as the likes of Apple and Alipay, are going, they're going to try and take your customers away from you by using the payment process, by controlling that. You must be concerned about this. There is effectively a new competition on data, client relationship. It's up to us to be a, a very good in the client satisfaction. Again, as I've said, when I look at what happened in the last 10 years, we've been able to maintain a very strong relationship with our clients, very strong level of confidence. It's up to us to innovate enough to provide the right services, adapt to their change of behaviors, and of course, remain a trusted partner. Associate General does a number of things to try and bring innovation inside. You have accelerators, you invest in startups, you work in collaboration with startups in, in the Paris tech scene. Uh, tell us a bit about that and how much do you plan to invest? Can you give us some sense of how much you plan to invest in IT development over the, the months to come? I can't give you a precise figure. We will communicate in due course on this. But clearly, if you wish, it's everywhere, in every businesses, every functions, IT innovation is at the heart of the changes of model, changes of strategy. Open architecture, it's for retail, but as well as the capital market. We have, for example, an SG market site with 700 apps which is available. And the idea is to stimulate that with internal also entrepreneurs. I'm just launching an internal uh, entrepreneurial uh, uh, process where we will try to create even more internal startups as well as external open architecture. You need to create the cultural change, you need to create the dynamic behind innovation everywhere. Now I understand that you've started learning how to code, is that right? Yes, I felt it was important for me also to understand exactly what coding means, so I spent a few hours in coding in Python, which is one of the two languages for data, just also to understand 
what it means exactly and to what extent, for example, IT engineers can, can retrain. I was, from that perspective, reasonably optimistic. It's not that difficult. I think people can train. It's a new language. Do you think every banking CEO should learn how to code? Up to them, but I mean, uh, it was fun. We created also a kind of game uh, with, uh, I was creating, uh, destroying apps, uh, simulation on apps with a cow's monkey game. I think it's fun and I think it's fair to say we need to be close to the IT people because themselves need to really be part of the story and put, bringing together business and IT guys is at the heart of the success going forward. Now one of the most dynamic areas of fintech is the French mobile banking scene. I mean that is just off the charts when it comes to all of the players that are competing. Can you share with us how you see profitability shaping up for you in mobile banking in France? I'm very positive with our uh, capacity because Boursorama is really by far the leader in online banking. When I say this, you need really to look at the product offering. We offer everything online. Mortgage, consumer credit, savings products, current accounts, payments, and really the operational leverage is great. So I'm very positive on the future prospects of profitability. We are gaining many, many hundreds of thousands of clients, more 1.2 million. It will be a very profitable model. Do you continue to have to add employees, to add investment uh, to this area? We need to, to, to further add uh, marketing uh, expenditure to conquer clients, but the operational leverage is very good. The, we don't need to add so many new people to serve hundreds of thousands of clients more. So I'm very positive going forward with this model. And then on the analog side, in terms of branches and so forth, do you foresee closing a lot more branches as a result of digitalization? We've said that already to our staff one year ago. Yes, there's a need to adapt the network because again, people do not go to branches as often as in the past. They do much more online with their apps. It's normal that they go to branches just for important moments. And important moments, a mortgage, a saving advisory uh, problem, it's once a year, something like this, not more. So will branch closers accelerate over the next couple of years? I think we are going to run something very smooth, but yes, we are closing branches something like 100 a year as a rhythm. I see. So when it comes to expansion in other European markets, will you use a digital model to do that? At some point, maybe. As I've said, for the time being, France is the priority. France is the priority for now. Yeah. Can you identify one particular market that looks particularly attractive to you right now? No, all these markets will change. It's not, uh, it's not really the priority. Let's see how things develop in particular with the new regulation you've mentioned, PSD2. And let's first take advantage of our leading advantage in France. And in I'd like to ask a Brexit question, if I may. I mean, we see the uncertainty around the Brexit process and it seems to be intensifying. Is this an opportunity for the Paris fintech scene, for the French fintech scene to, to grow even more in, the, in opposition to London? I'm not sure that, to be frank, a direct link between Brexit and uh, Paris. What is happening is overall a better regulatory tax environment, which is now more attractive for entrepreneurs. And I think it's more important than Brexit to stimulate the creation of new companies in France.